to be time. Ready? Welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for Monday, June 10th. If we could have a roll call, please, to establish a quorum. Harry Meyer. Present. Melissa Green. Here. Karen McClung. I'm here. Susan Harmon. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. And Mickey is absent with notice. All right. We can stand and have a pledge of allegiance, please. A pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic, republic for which, which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Get a um, motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Get a second. 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 All right. Does anybody have anything? I changes? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Got um, under new business. We had uh, animal law changes, and um, after quite a bit of research and reviewing, um, I noticed that the August 27, 2018 meeting, it appears to me, after watching and reading, that that, um, that request to change was not approved, did not pass by a majority. Yeah. Uh, at this time, too, Ms. Snyder would like to to uh, defer that since she's not here. Could you pass this down, please? Um. Okay. Um. Which, that was part of my ordinance, and, and I wouldn't mind discussing it, and Mickey discussed it the last time when I wasn't here. And there's information in your packet? If there's information. I mean, it would just be for discussion. Okay. Well, it's up to the council. Okay. Um, all right. Any ch any changes? We're still up for discussion. All right. Hearing none. All those in favor of the agenda as submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Get four one. Get a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve minutes. Second. I'll second that. All right. Any changes? Additions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes that's proven the minutes that's submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 I wasn't here. I recuse. Um, I abstain. I wasn't here. So would we have three? I didn't hear all the votes. I've got an aye. I think we had three. Two so abstentions. Three, two. Okay, I'll vote aye. All right. Um, I think in, you received a uh, quarterly report from uh, our building official. That should have been in your packets in there. Uh, also, uh, we've got some vacancies with the Planning Commission. Uh, also, uh, on the CAPC, which is expiring mm -hmm. into this month, uh, we have an application from Dr. Tyson Burden on the Hospital Commission. And uh, <coughs> that's kind of where we are with the commissions and committees right now. Uh, which brings us to the public comments. Please limit your time to three minutes. <coughs> if you'd state your name, please, sir. My name is Leon Burt, B-E-R-T. I live at 15 East Mountain Drive. Unfortunately, I can't read the comments as I wrote them, so Ms. Stryker volunteered to read them to the council for me. Thank you. East Mountain Drive is one of two streets connecting Highway 62 and 23. The other is, is Passion Play Road. Our street has no sidewalk nor shoulders. The speed limit is 25 miles per hour, which cars routinely exceed. This problem was brought to the Eure Eureka Springs governing body in 2016. Enclosed, and Council, you've received this packet, please find a letter from Councilman Thomas sent to the police chief and the chief's response, exhibits one and two. 
speed tables as used near the schools were requested and we were told that there was no money in the budget for them speed bumps were given which have been somewhat beneficial but have not solved the problem the speed bumps are placed at the inception and conclusions exhibits three points a and B leaving three-tenths of a mile for cars to speed in excess of the 25 mile an hour limit there are eight children and three dog walkers in the three-tenths of a mile public safe safety is paramount we propose to replace the speed bumps with speed tables points A and B and using money now available center the two speed bumps in between thereby preventing cars from speeding along the three-tenths mile as they do now our street should not be used as a shortcut and the speed limit abused in the process since we have marginal police presence the speed tables would be silent sentinels ensuring vehicles respect and adhere to the speed limit or since highway 62 has a 30 mile an hour limit lower East Mountain speed to 25 mi or 20 miles an hour pardon me 20 miles an hour thank you Leon Burt number 15 East Mountain Drive Hi, I'm tip -tip. my name is Dr. Laura Rowetz. I'm the clinical supervisor for Dr. Paul's behavioral health program, a new uh, substance use disorder and dual diagnosis program located at 154 Huntsville Road. Uh, we're in the old Colonial Inn. We opened a week ago Friday, and as I said, we're a substance use disorder facility for adults and also co-ed. Um, uh, our director is Shane Latimer. Um, I'm the clinical supervisor. We've got a doc and a doctor and uh, two nurses on staff, as well as a full residential staff. Um, we have six detox beds. We have 30 regular beds for a 28-day program, and then we have a step-down unit. Sorry, can you speak up just a little bit louder, please? I'm sorry. No, she can't. Yeah. Can <laughs> I'm on tiptoes. Can you adjust her mic? That doesn't make a difference. That doesn't make a difference. She's standing on her tiptoes. Very Shall I start, start again? No. Okay. Uh, we've got six detox beds. We've got 30 regular beds for the 28-day program, and we can go up to six months. We have a step-down unit behind. Um, uh, that's called a transition program, where we transition our folks back into the community or back into their community. Uh, we are state licensed, um, and we are accredited with uh, the Joint Commission for Health. Um, the intake number, if anyone is interested, is 1-800-375-5725, and my personal number at work is 949 three one three five two five seven and if we can be of help please let us know thank you thank you I'll try to speak more level this time <laughs> so I don't shout at you I'm Damon Hinky I'm with the Chamber of Commerce uh, tomorrow we have morning brew morning brew is at 8 a.m. Uh, it actually is a social time from 8 a.m. to 8 30 it's at the Community Center and tomorrow's topic is uh, how to make your business attractive for sale so we know that there's a lot of businesses in town that are available for sale and obviously we want to connect buyers and sellers so therefore uh, tomorrow's topic will be what to look for how to market your business the ins and outs of both sides of the transaction we've got a specialist from Fayetteville coming over and again that's at the community center it's called morning brew 8 a.m. Uh, 8 30 is the actual presentation lasts about an hour and a half so see you there also uh, I just want to put my two cents in for uh, the 6th of July we got a lot of businesses uh, I talked to Justin uh, who are excited about having fireworks on marble flats and we will be announcing and positioning everyone in town the Chamber of Commerce as visitor services will certainly get out the word because obviously everyone will be calling saying where should we wa watch fireworks from so very critical I've got uh, Kent Butler lined up uh, for the passion play we'll work with Jack Moyer for the Basin and Crescent and get as much positioning in town as we can to make this the best 4th of July display that we've had in years but uh, we're just waiting to, to find out the ins and outs of that so looking forward to your approval for that in scene
I wish I could speak that wonderfully. Um, I'm Carrie Mary. I live on Wall Street, and I'm one of four people that are a partnership that's uh, developing a little neighborhood up on East Mountain. And I wasn't really wanting to speak, but um, the subject of our road up there has come up, so I would like to clarify just things that are really near and dear to me and um, kind of expound a little bit on what we are doing up there and why we're doing it. Um, the last council meeting we came to, we spoke right behind, or my husband had a chance to make a comment behind uh, Dwayne Allen. And it was interesting that uh, when Dwayne talked about the budget and the roads that needed work and the, the, the ongoing problems in Eureka Springs, they're always water related, or a lot of them are water related. And it could be the runoff from the water or it's the gravel that's created. Um, what we're doing up at our property, um, and thanks to our wonderful planning department and so many people, uh, really helped us get a, a words to go along with our vision for the neighborhood we're creating up there. And one of the most helpful books was this Low Impact Development, um, uh, a design manual for urban areas that Glenna Booth shared with us. And you can see I've put it to good use. And it, it was kind of like a eureka moment because we knew we had this beautiful piece of property. Uh, the word stewardship was like utmost in our minds. We have neighbors below. We're in this unique uh, historic cottage area. So we wanted to build homes and um, craft a neighborhood of people that could live there come and go for, you know, hopefully 100 years, just like all the beautiful homes here in Eureka Springs. What we didn't want to do was cause uh, scouring water problems for our neighbors below, because I've seen that happen in our town over and over again. Someone comes in, bulldozes, puts up a concrete pad, a, a, a paved driveway, and off we go. So what we're doing up there is terracing. We have rain gardens around the houses that have required it especially. Um, and we would very much like to keep the road permeable, uh, because the water that comes off the gravel road, or it's actually pea gravel, goes into our park, which is a central kind of a rain garden, if you will. Um, the reason we've put all that extra energy and effort and really money, too, into the design is because, as I said, we want to make sure we do not contribute to the ongoing issues with roads in our town. And creative ways to build in our town are not just using pavement and cement. The road is not complete yet because we are still doing a lot of development up there. It's not like we're going to hand it over to you um, the way it is. But we do have um, street lights that are beautiful and ambient. The, 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 the uh, whole property is terraced and stone walled. Um, and if you haven't been up there to have a look at what we're doing, I would love for you to come up. If you don't understand, I even brought our little brochure that we print out, and we've given out hundreds of them to people that come up to see what we're doing. And two years ago, the now defunct Springs, um, Spring Community Committee came up to see what we were doing, and they were thrilled. And I just, that's my comments, and thank you for letting me talk. <laughs> I'm another piece of the partnership up on the up over loop here, and I just got a few things that Carrie never really mentioned that I thought were really important too. The what, houses what we were building, name? we put metal roofs Who on them. What is your name? David Mary. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> The houses we were building have metal roofs on them, and the water then goes into gutters and into all these rain gardens. We're trying to bring clear, clean rainwater and hold it on the property. And so far, we've had a very good success rate at that. We had a, one time we had a 14-inch rainfall over two days. We had no water coming out below the houses. And right below us is council and the whole downtown. So it all if it comes off of us, it goes onto the road, and then it goes all downtown. We have held back all of this water and over many, many months now and we've seen no harm coming to the properties below us. And that's what we're trying to get into on this thing. Uh, but we had no runoff. Uh, we figured it out that a, a one inch rainfall drops approximately 10,000 gallons on our roads up there. And if these roads are paved, first thing you know, the water is just heading downhill. And once it starts heading downhill, we're not in control of it anymore. And we're, we're really, really trying to keep this into our park and into our rain gardens up there. And it's, so far, it's really working really good. That's about all I had to say. Thank you.
I'm Holly Westcott reading um, a letter from a resident who was unable to be here tonight. Um, her name is Trace Ellen Kelly. She lives at 190 North Main Street. Um, so this is all from her. My questions and concerns about the fireworks show in town. One, when speaking with each of you um, council members, I found three people didn't even really know where the fireworks were going to happen. I find that a little disconcerting. Do each of you know where it will be before you vote on it tonight? Uh, two, one of, the one of you mentioned that this is a tourist town and it will bring in tourists. Yes, but do you realize this is a city where people live also? It is not always about tourists. Three, where will everyone park? Four, where will the spectators congregate to sit and view said show? Five, is there a road up to the site so a fire truck can get there easily? Six, is there any easy access to water at this location? Seven, has it been established that the company putting on this show has insurance to cover for anything bad happening? My concerns are, with this show being so close to town, have they considered those that live in this immediate area that have have PTSD, how it will affect them. Normally if you have this illness you just choose not to go to the show, but having it in this area they can't escape the loud explosions and noises. Pets in the area will hear the loud explosions and noises will scare them. This can traumatize pets. Being, and finally, being so close to homes and many trees, I am concerned something will go awry and a fire might happen. This is all just too close to homes. My name is David Zimmerman. I am here to comment on the matter of David Mary's Corley Loop, which will come up later in the meeting. Alexander Stillman and I own lots across East Mountain Drive from Mr. Mary's development. Our interest is in maintaining the quality of the neighborhood. To that end, we ask that Mr. Mary be told that he needs to do now what he should have done to begin with. Build a road that is up to code with the knowledge and approval of the Director of Public Works. Building permits have been issued already for four of the 16 houses Mr. Mary proposes in his development. Every time the city permits another house to be built on what it knows to be a substandard road, it is knowingly endorsing the construction of a substandard residential development directly across the street from our property. Is this the future any of us want for any part of Eureka Springs? Please, for the good of the city and the neighborhood, let Mr. Mary know in response to his proposed gift that once the road has been brought up to code, he can come back and ask for anything he wants, including any more building permits. The way these infill developments are treated in relation to the city building code will help determine what kind of place Eureka becomes. Let's get it right. Thank you. All right, that concludes the uh, public comments. Uh
At this time, we'll go ahead and <coughs> bring up unfinished business, which is ordinance number 2278 for its third reading. Get a motion to discuss. I move to make a motion to discuss. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, all right, hearing none, do I get a motion to put this on the third and final reading? I move to suspend the rules and place ordinance number 2278 on its third reading by title only. I have a second. Isn't that suspending the rules, don't you? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I move to suspend the rules and place ordinance 2278 on its third reading by title only. Right. Got a second? Second. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none. <coughs> What's, what What's your that vote? Mean? Oh, I just coughed right in the middle. Sorry. Uh, I vote yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Ms. Harmon? Yes. Mr. McClung? No. Ms. Green? Yes. 4-1. All right. Ordinance number 2278, an ordinance amending the Eureka Spring Municipal Code to prohibit animal suffering. Get a motion to approve ordinance number 2278 on its third and final reading. I make a motion to approve Ordinance 2278 on its third reading. Second. Discussion? Is that votes for it? Mr. McClung? No. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Harmon? Yes. 4-1. All right, so moved. Uh, okay, get a motion to approve ordinance number 2279 uh, for discussion. Third uh, reading. Motion. Second. All right, got a motion and a second. Discussion. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, the questions that I have and the way that it is written. Um, my, my major concern right now is that, um, and this relates to location, is that we are, we are not limiting where the firing of fireworks can be, meaning we can shoot them off from city-owned land and we can shoot them off from private land. I have an issue with with um, any fireworks being shot from private land just because of the liability. So um, this particular ordinance, the way it is written, doesn't specify that it would be one or the other. At right now, the city could determine any place within city limits that they could shoot, whether it be private or city-owned land. Mr. McClung. Well, I, I think uh, wording it like this at least um, uh, covers this uh, because I, I, I don't think we can even shoot it off at Leatherwood because Leatherwood is inside the city limits without having this ordinance. So I think this ordinance is need, needed in that respect. Um, uh, the, as far as, as personal property, I don't have a problem with that, as long as the city is indemnified, um, you know, on, on what the location is, that I don't certainly, it doesn't need to be something that where the city is held liable or responsible, uh, whether it's, you know, the, uh, but, and I'm not sure what qualifies in doing that. That's my comments. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a lot of questions because I wasn't here the last time. <laughs> Justin, first of all, I think what you have done with parks has been fantastic, and I like the direction you're moving. But sometimes I disagree with you, so I've, I've got a lot of questions. 
Um, why was there no approval by the Parks Commission for this? There was in our budget discussions. This was part of our special events line item. That was when we discussed okay. it. But they don't have any say on doing this. No, I'm not following. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, I guess from being a commissioner, when there's a big change in something, like moving it from Lake Leatherwood to another area, it usually comes. And to me, I'm just asking why it didn't come to the Parks Commission. Uh, everybody liked the idea when we talked about it in the budget meeting. Okay. Uh, that was, okay. You know, so, so it was discussed yeah. with the Parks Commission. Okay. What about traffic control and, and the notification? Right. And that's, what, again, as we reach approval and have the, everything locked down, we let everybody know the, the map I've put hinted out there to you. If you look at it, the, the black circle, I apologize for doing black and white, but those mm -hmm. color printing is really expensive. Um, but that shows you the area that ran. We're almost completely within the Marble Flats property okay. and the safety zones of that firing area. And that's one of the advantages of this show from a logistics standpoint is there's no access to the, shoot, to the uh, shooting site right. for, for the public. Right. But <coughs> my, my concern is if, this, if we were talking about this for next year, I could be really on board because we'd have time. But our guests that come to town that day are going to be out driving around and all of a sudden fireworks go off and they're going to be stopping in the middle of the road because they want to see them. I, you know, Damon was nice enough, which I'm very grateful for, that they're offering, you know, the, the city community center and I, I'm assuming passion play. But I'm, I am really concerned about the traffic control and what's been done. I mean, I, I, and I can, no, I can I'm, just talk I'm just curious why you think the traffic is going well, to be any worse than. Well, because if, than if somebody doesn't know that this is going to happen yeah. and these fireworks start going off, they're going to want to look at them and, and they're going to try to pull over and park, get out of their cars. I, I mean, so, I, mean it, 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 I, I, I get what you're saying. I just don't know if that's unique to this location. And it may not. And it is to anywhere it, on any road. It may fireworks. not be, but it could be a very big problem, okay. especially. I live up on the upper loop and down by Susan's house all the way to the community center, there's nowhere to park. Right. But it's a great place to watch the fireworks. So, yeah. I mean, has this been addressed? I mean, the way we see it is I kind of expect this to be like a parade night, you know, okay. traffic-wise. I mean, we, we have a lot of people in town a lot of times with a lot of stuff going on. Yes. Um, so one of, the, one of the advantages, again, from... To us, we th with the logistics of it, is this that people don't have to go to one place. There's not a concentration of vehicles. Right. There's not the viewing area. This is something we think can lift up a lot of businesses with an opportunity and um, that people will be parking again, kind of like a, a busy Saturday night right. is kind of how we expect it to go uh -huh. with that with some, some viewing you know, areas, certainly. Right. And, and I don't disagree that it, with the proper notification and proper time, this could be great. I mean, it could be a great festival. I, I, I see that. What about the notification? We have a lot of veterans in town that have post-traumatic stress disorder or veterans that are coming to town that have this, that don't know about this. And our, our animals, it's the biggest day that pets bolt during fireworks. I did ask both Holly and Samantha when I was working at the Humane Society to please put an article in the paper about this, and I'm going to ask you to please put something about the post-traumatic stress disorder because I don't want this to happen to anyone. Um, and at that point, we, I feel pretty confident that we have two newspapers here that we're going to have this out pretty okay. well, so I think we can reach out okay. again to the community. We'd like to do some of that outreach, but it would be inappropriate until this body decides to go forward with notifications on something that hasn't formally, you know, isn't legal okay. until this uh, ordinance is Okay. Ratified. Well, somebody just brought up, and, and this is a concern, how if there is a fire up there, and I, I know these people are professionals, how is a fire truck going to get up there? I believe we have talked about having one stationed up there with Can, uh, is, is there a road up there? Yes. Okay. Because yes. I was told today the only way to get up there is by ATV. No, or that's fine. Right. I, I, okay. I just drove uh, Mr. Meyer up there today. Okay. So, um, by the way, Harry. Watch out for ticks. Yeah, I was going to say, Harry, by the way, check yourself for ticks. Okay. So, yeah. Harry <laughs> went up there. Okay. Don't the, carry off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, um, no, their access, and again, and, and Chief Sinek and, and, and Fire Marshal Kelly and I went up and looked at the site, and, and just to assure everyone that the, the conversation was had that none of us are going to be that guy that mm -hmm. does something not safe. And this was months ago as we right. were looking at this, hoping you know if it's, mm -hmm. in the discussions were if it's too dry, no go, you know, all, all those dynamics. Um, but the the location up there. Um, as we did our field trip today, is, is literally slabs of rocks mm -hmm. all over the site. Of okay. a large clearing, and you know, so that it, we, we feel really confident about the emergency response. And, and the same thing could happen out at Lake Leatherwood. I mean, I, I don't believe in anything's going to happen, but I just want to know the logistics. One of the things that does bother me, and this is the city council, a couple of months ago. Mr. McClung said we don't change an ordinance for one person, yet we're changing a major ordinance for one entity. Um, we also have on our technically it's CAPC and Parks. So right, but but okay, but we're still one entity, um, and we also have an ordinance coming up tonight where we might change something for one person. So that's a, a little disconcerting. Now that's just me. <coughs> The, the other thing, it's like I said, I, I'm not really truly against this. I, I'm, I'm against that this is kind of a rush job, and you haven't really answered my questions on the notifications, such as the HDC and planning. They do some little thing, and letters go out. And so how are we going to notify other than our articles in the paper? Our, Mr. Mayor, are you willing to put out some bulletins I, I mean I think there's some importance to that certainly and I and like, again like I said until this you know we're official okay. it's not appropriate for us to get that that completely out but I mean we absolutely do and we're, we're very conscious of, of all the situation animals and PTSD and we've uh, spoke with the VFW members that maybe there's some way to reach out mm -hmm. and, and, and and I know those things we used to do fireworks at my house out in the country and my right. dog would go to my mom's during that weekend right uh, you know right. to come out we're talking about a 15 minute show Right, um, but, but you know, for a veteran or an animal, 15 minutes can be an excruciating torture. Sure, and if we get notifications out, perhaps there's steps yeah. that can be taken or uh, right. something else. I, right, you know, and, I, I mean, I guess my only discontent is just this is awfully quick. If we were discussing this for next year, yeah. I would probably be on board. It sounds wonderful. I think it can be a wonderful festival yeah. if the council passes it. I'm sure you'll work out everything, and I hope next year you do work at it and make it a great festival. Okay, I'm done. Mr. McClung? Uh, I'm not really sure I understand. I mean, I, I know there's discussion about, discussion about having fireworks at Marble Flats, but this ordinance doesn't reflect anything about that. It doesn't mention anything. This is an ordinance that approves city sponsored and supervised fireworks inside the city limits, which includes Leatherwood, which we've had them at Leatherwood before without without the proper ordinance, I guess, to say that we can do that. So this just cleans that up. It doesn't make any reference to anything else. So you know, <coughs> what you're asking or, or mentioning has nothing to do with this ordinance. Ms. Um, just going back to what I'm asking, and I agree with Terry, if Lake Leatherwood is in, in the city limits, then there wasn't anything to do this. Again, my biggest issue, and I'd like to ask Tim a question if I can, <coughs> that is in regards to my question of whether or not it's on city property or it's on private property. and. Private property, from what I understand, um, they do have a uh, have liability insurance, and the city has liability insurance. My biggest thing is, are we required? Well, I, I don't like it being on private property. I'd rather it just be on city because we're using city equipment, city personnel, and it's being sponsored by the city. Number two is, is that sufficient? And I would ask Tim that: is that sufficient in this particular case? Or do we need a, um, a release from the property owner additionally so that we aren't liable for anything if it does happen? And, and, and that's the biggest issue that I have 
with the way that this is written because it doesn't clarify whether or not it's city or whether or not it's private. Right now it states it basically allows the city to determine where it is, whether or not it be city property or private property. So that, that's really my question. Mr. Mayor, yes. point of order. I'm sorry, Susan. I'm just that <coughs> this ordinance has nothing about fireworks being done anywhere. Nothing. I know, and that's why I'm trying to clarify. So that's well, why I'm trying what, to clarify. What, you, what is your question to Mr. Weaver? My question is, if we were to change this ordinance so that it, it, it clarified that it could only be on city property, in, in does that with it now being either private or city, city determining where it is, could we be held liable if something happens and it's on private property without either a release and or with the current insurance? Tort immunity. The city has tort immunity unless we have insurance. So to purchase insurance would actually be disadvantageous to the city, whether it's on public or private property. If you shoot them at Leatherwood, if you shoot aerials, they have the tendency to be caught by the wind and they can be carried onto private property. So you're not going to insure anywhere in the city of Eureka Springs that you're going to ex exclusively only fire aerials that are going to land on city property. So whether you shoot them from private property or not, unless the chief is going to hire someone to intentionally blow up a building with the fireworks, we're not liable based on tort immunity unless we do have insurance that covers it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Meyer. Um, yeah, I, I'm... I'm with Mr. McClung. This, this ordinance has nothing to do with where it's being fired off. Now, Justin took me up there and up here on, on the mountain and we looked at the site and, and I agree that that's a very safe place to do this. Uh, there won't be any spectators on the mountain there. It'll all be blocked off. So you'll be, I mean, it's a good spot to do it. Um, I see, though, that the insurance here is for Leatherwood Park, and that's the only thing that I'm, as far as this alternate site is concerned, that the liability insurance is for Leatherwood, not for, uh, not for uh, Marble Flats, but that's probably a technicality that can be taken care of. Uh, but what do you read? In the ordinance? The insurance. No, no, no. no. He uh, showed oh. me liability. Yeah. Liability insurance from the people that shoot off the fireworks. Not All right. Well, that's city. separate, yeah. But that's secondary to our ordinance. We have to have the ordinance if we're going to have fireworks. And the 4th of July is when people shoot fireworks off. That's when municipalities do that. We celebrate the birth of our nation. I mean, that's... That's something that's done. We need, that's, I think we need to observe this holiday the way people do it all over the United States. Anything else? Yeah. Mr. Green? Um, the original ordinance was that we did not fire off fireworks in the city limits, correct? I, I was not handed that. So we are changing an ordinance. No, we're not. There is we're no new ordinance to that effect that anybody located. Yes. Okay, so there isn't. So this is a new ordinance. Okay, then I was incorrect original? about changing got, something. We do have a... It's the original. Do, do you ordinance have... ordinance 1913. An ordinance from 1913? No, ordinance number 1913. No. Oh, okay. So that was for not having fireworks within the city limits, correct? I didn't see that yeah. before. Okay. So, okay. Again, and, and I'm just bringing up, you know, we, we are changing a major ordinance that does affect the health, safety, and welfare of our citizens. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a bad ordinance. It's just, it's changing, and, and we're doing it for one entity. So we've 
we brought this up recently. Why are we changing something for one person? Or so that's just part of my argument, and that, that's I'm just going to leave it at that. So if something happens, and and I really truly don't, and hope nothing happens. Basically, the city has tort immunity. So if someone's house burns down and they don't have replacement value, then they're out the money. I think the, the company has insurance, okay. and we've got tort immunity. Okay. How, how much insurance, Justin, does I think it's $9 million. $9 million. Okay. Well, that can pay for a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, and I, and I believe the property is sold for 350 Okay. For something to that, um, just for the liability oh, okay. from that side, and if I'm not out of order, I'd speak to your points, Ms. Harmon. Okay. okay. Um, the, just about the discussions we had regarding the private property and the nature of it was that there was no benefit to the private property owner, that it was for the public good from that location, um, and, and again, that we felt the legalities are covered with the liability insurance for their side and for additional, uh, you know, the, the potential of the other damage from that. So. Um, do you need do you have okay. something? Yes. Uh, I'd like to address Mr. Green's uh, concern about it being for one person. The uh, paragraph that has been added to this in order for it to be uh, enacted and properly tonight is an emergency clause, and that in indicates that this is for the welfare of the people. It's my understanding that we are a tourist town and that it would be enacted by this council as part of an attraction to bring people to town. So it would not be just for one person. It's not changing it to benefit only one person. And I need to clarify that because if this was challenged in a court, that would be the standing to challenge that particular portion of the ordinance is that if the council doesn't understand that it is to provide for a tourist base for the entire population or for a majority of the population, then the council shouldn't be approving it because you're not doing it for one party. You're doing it to enhance the overall economy and welfare of the populace of the city. Mr. Oh, Thomas? Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to point out that if if Justin had come in wanting to do fireworks at Lake Leatherwood and said, we just found out it's not legal, you're going to have to pass this ordinance so we can have fireworks at Lake Leatherwood, I think probably everybody here would vote for it. So you're still stuck on location, and this ordinance has nothing to do okay. with location. Okay. I, I, so if I vote yes, I'm just voting yes for the ordinance. If I vote no, I'm voting against the ordinance. I'm not basically... You can do whatever you want. It's kind of what you're saying. No? I'm not going to make that statement. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I'm getting, I, I, I'm going to use Mickey's things. I'm getting confused. Um, so basically, we're changing this ordinance so that you actually at Lake Leatherwood now okay. and Marble Flats can now do fireworks inside the city limits. Okay. Mr. Oh, McClellan? I'm so confused. Mr. Mayor, uh, I suggest this, and, and, and I hope that somebody understands what I'm saying, is that if they want to change the ordinance, then make an amendment to change it. If not, then let's move forward and vote and go on, because it's, as Mr. Thomas said, it's, it's all it's doing is giving the, the city permission to have fireworks that we did not have. And, it, in, and the decision as far as to uh, letting it be done, I'm, I'm, that's at your office, isn't it? Yes. So what's the, what's the deal? You know, let's, let's get on or off the pot. All right. Get a motion then to, uh, to approve? Yes. Oops. I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas, did you... Have well, something? Have we read it already for the third reading? Okay. No. So then I move to suspend the rules and read Ordinance 2279 by title only on its third reading. Second. Okay. Discussion? 
hearing none, let's have fireworks. Ms. Herman? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Green? No. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Board one? Ordinance amending Title VII of Eureka Springs Municipal Code clarified use of items containing powder or other combustible or explosive material or to employ or in any way use theatrical pyrotechnics. Utilize. Utilize. Okay. Uh, get a motion. Mr. Thomas? I move to approve ordinance number 2279. Second. In discussion? Ms. Green? No. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Harmon? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. 4 1. All right. Uh, now we need to have, because of the time clause, this uh, being the. <coughs> Tenth of the month, uh, we got an emergency clause in here. I need Mr. To Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, invoke the emergency clause for for ordinance number twenty two seventy nine. Okay, get a second. Second. Motion, second. Discussion. Right. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Mr. McClung. Yes. Ms. Green. No. Ms. Harmon. Yes. Mr. Meyer. Yes. Right. Somebody. Move. Thank you. Emergency clause, section four. The due to the need to ensure the <coughs> welfare and safety of the citizens of the city of city. An emergency is hereby declared to exist, and this ordinance shall take effect upon its passage by the Eureka Springs City Council and signing by the Eureka Springs Mayor. All right. Uh, all right, that brings us up to uh, <coughs> item number three and discussion on Norris property. Motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. Second. Uh, I met with uh, the director and executive director of, of uh, Mercy Hospital last week uh, regarding Norris property, 25 Norris. Uh, they were very interested, but unfortunately the property is too small for their use. So they're wanting to, uh, they weren't able to uh, do anything for us. I sent you all uh, the copies of the different, two different uh, appraisals, one for commercial, one for residential, just so we would know what was, uh, what was going on with that. Uh, I think it's now up to the city council to decide how they want to handle the North Street property. So... Ms. Green? I, th I think I emailed you on this. When we put it out for bid, I, I was, I, and I'm not a professional, but I did not agree with the per appraisal, knowing the comps that I know in the city, and by the pictures that I saw online, it, it is actually, it has a kitchen, it has baths, it's really actually a move-in ready place. I mean, it's not greatly decorated, it needs some work. Um, can we ask more than the appraisal? No. We take a bid. It's got to be by bid. It but is up to the council to decide whether or not they want to accept that bid. They do not have to accept the lowest bid or but, the highest but bid. But do we have to keep it at the appraisal? No. You no. didn't. Okay. This goes out for bid, and we'll take bids. It's up to the council whether or not they want to accept that bid. Okay. We do not have to accept that bid. We Any can bid. accept or reject any bid. Exactly. Okay. We can, we can reject the million dollar bid for this piece of property. God, I hope we don't. Mr. Okay. <laughs> Mr. McClung? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we, the city, uh, uh, put up for bid the, the city owned property at, on North Street. I don't know what the, the number of it is. 25 North? 25 North Street. Second. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Mm -mm. All right, all those in favor of putting up 25 Norris uh, out for, for bids for sale, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, I'll get it started. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Sir? At this point, 
I move to rescind the approval of ordinance number 2275 on April 8, 2019. Ordinance number 2275 was the ordinance which revoked ordinance number 2179, which allowed one member of city council to serve on the planning commission. The I planning commission, and Robert's rules of order says I can explain my reason. Uh, the planning commission has missed two meetings because of a lack of a quorum. And at the last meeting where they did not meet, it was, there was a public hearing. The, the person had sent out registered letters to everybody, and the city had published in the newspaper. So missing these meetings is starting to cause them trouble. I will second that. Okay. Um, we got a motion uh, to add. Mr. McClellan. Mr. McClellan. Yeah, is uh, is anyone sitting at this table willing to fill in? I would if no one else did. I have experience. Do we do we have? To, well, I guess we do have to put it. Rescind it would be the only way to make that acceptable. Is it? Is it look like it's going to be a continuing problem? They were that they were shorthanded. Or was somebody from just happened to From my understanding, and talking with the chairman, um, they have <clears throat> what they may be doing is wanting to have, uh, similar to what the CAPC does, have one scheduled monthly meeting and then have one workshop meeting. Uh, one of the members can't attend the regular scheduled meeting, and that was a problem for the. I mean, they can't. Ex they can't attend two a month, or they can't attend two a month it, it, because of work relation. His employee won't let him off. But yeah, he works nights. And we got to have this member t in order to have a quorum. Correct. Because yeah. we're what short two. Yeah. Is that what it is, or three, or three. how many? We're short three. Yeah. Out of seven. Come on, people. <laughs> I know. Uh. Uh, Miss Hartman. So, are you are you saying that the if we change or if they are allowed to change their meetings to one per month and then do one workshop a month, this the individual that's having an issue with work schedule would be able to make one? Is yes. it a, a specific one or is it either yeah. or? Well he would be able to make this one he would be able to make the scheduled meeting from the what schedule. I understand from the chairman. Okay. The workshop doesn't have to have a quorum, no business can yeah. be attended. I just meant was it the so first of the first meeting of the month or the second one, and would that schedule stay consistent, his work schedule? Well, yeah, well, I'm sure it would. Okay. That's up to the Planning Commission. And then what, what, what would we have to do, or do we have to do anything to allow them to do that? We don't have to do a thing. Okay. Okay. Mr. McClellan? I really hate making it just one meeting a month because it, it really limits what the people's rights, you know, so they can get things through and done and move forward with their projects. They could um, also have special meetings. Huh? They could also have special meetings. Well, if he can't get off for that meeting, when they, are they going to schedule it at 2 o'clock in the morning? I mean, I, They may make it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know. I, it, it just, I don't know. That just, uh, we weren't a rock in a hard place. I hate it. But, uh, they need to be able to operate. Ms. Green? Um, I'm not campaigning to be back on it, but that really bothered me that we had a conditional use permit. And by law, that person should have reapplied again, sent out all the notifications. Um, I do know because I had someone that called me that was coming down to say, where is it? What happened? So there was someone that came to it. And I, there, there's been problems, and, we, and we've gotten down to where there's four commissioners. Someone gets sick, like I got sick a few months ago. We stop city business. And I don't like the idea of going down to one meeting a month either. I mean, I, I think we all ought to really look and ask people to be on it. But until then, I, I think one of our city council people should go and I also just I, I personally think there's a lot of times 
planning comes in here and we don't know and it's like really we don't have a liaison so when we have a council member that sits like we have council members that sit on the CAPC we have a liaison we know what's going on with planning I mean I actually think we should have someone that is a liaison to the HDC these are very very important commissions for our town and our historic districts so I don't think this is unacceptable to put a counselor on there Mr. Thomas well I just think that that you know setting it up so that at the work at this workshop that'll occur every month there would only be three three members there if you had the city council person there you know that at least they've got four people problems the representation a little bit however I know that we well we, I guess we need to vote on this yeah. right, Ms. Harmon I just have a quick, quick question um, so we're able to do a temporary person on planning and they would be able to are you saying they would be able to change their schedule would they be able to switch their schedule back as soon as they had someone or would it be for a certain time frame um, okay so repeat you your they question. want to switch their they're from two meetings a month to one meeting and one workshop correct that was a suggestion by the chairman okay and do they have to once they switch that are they allowed to switch it again is oh, that just my vote right yeah it's up okay. to the Commission to do what they how they handle their own policies okay. and we could vote for a temporary person yes we can we can the, mo the motion is question. just re rejecting but yes we could all right is it okay, green. is it okay if I give a little history to this no we we're just I mean okay I think what we're talking about is trying to get a um, vote on this so. okay call the question Mr. which <laughs> hold on just a moment oh. Mr. do you uh, have an ordinance in pocket the ordinance the or, uh, no I'm asking you have to have an ordinance to rescind or a resolution to rescind do you have one a resolution to rescind if it's going to be temporary as Ms. Harmon is suggesting it can be right. a resolution if it is going to be a permanent change it needs to be written as an ordinance and the ordinance needs to be passed in the normal course of an ordinance passage. if we're sending the vote on the or uh, previous uh, that ordinance if it has been approved it is the law of the city at this point but are you talking about law saying we have to have an ordinance or are you talking about you our cannot change an ordinance that is in existence unless you do an ordinance or a resolution to change it okay question mr. Weaver, if I may yes so we could do uh, like a, a, a 90 day resolution you could do a, a 90 day resolution it would be a temporary change that's what a resolution is for is a temporary change an ordinance is for a permanent change that's something we could do now could we take a break I, I'm gonna move that we take a break and let mr. Weaver write well, we have an ordinance we have a motion and a second I don't, what was the motion to rescind ordinance 2275 that remove ordinance 2179 okay I have to I have to take back that motion correct and the and second I'll take back my second and now I move to take a break and let mr. Weaver write us a resolution I'll second for six months well let's 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 first see if we can get a resolution passed and then take the break how, to how allow you do that see if if the council is in favor of a resolution for six months oh then. okay then I make a move to pa to have mr. Weaver write a resolution that allows us to put to, that allows us to what mr. are we gonna what would word do we use to override this ordinance temporarily mr. But Weaver just mr. Weaver what's what's the form of the correct motion the best way to do it would be for um, the councilman to make a motion that take a vote of support for the drafting of a resolution and then if the vote is in favor of drafting a resolution give me 10 minutes and I can have you a resolution 
be handwritten, but it'll work. Okay, I don't have okay. to. Okay. And at that point, then you devote the resolution just like any other resolution. Okay. So if you want six months, we can just do it right. six months. Mm -hmm. Resolution for six months to establish a city oh, council member to be our plan for six Overriding this ordinance okay. or whatever. That's All right. Motion to make a resolution. Uh, so a council member can be uh, on the city on the planning commission for a temporary time six months. We have discussion. Yes. Second. Okay. Right. Now we have discussion. Okay. I, I, I'm not in favor of six <coughs> months. I, I'd be better off with 90 days. <coughs> so. Okay. Ms. Green. Could we write the motion for six months? with the possibility if we got new members that Absolutely. that would end yeah I, I i like personally i like the six months they are having they're struggling so bad and when you have four okay. members okay. <coughs> all right mr thomas do you oh. have anything else no if we'll vote i'm not going to say another word all right. Uh, all right all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed no i think that's four one okay um, motion for 10 minute recess. Oh, I move that we take a 10 minute recess. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Maybe it should have been five minutes. <laughs> What was that ordinance number again? What? what was the ordinance number that said no planning?
championship? Yes, it'll be the World Series. There's 18 to go, and so they have they'll have two two sets of four teams. Okay. They, they have well, they have a double elimination uh, tournament for each set of four, and the winner of those two four finals follows. So it starts at 15, and then run through. Thursday or Friday of the following week, whatever the case, if any set up, maybe the Saturday could. And then Monday, the 24th, which will be our meeting here. But if Arkansas makes it, they're going to go finals. I'm going over. I understand. Now, didn't the women just win? They won the track track field. Yes, yes, they did. They took uh, first in the nation.
<laughs> and I'll second it. Okay. We got a motion to pass your resolution. This uh, discussion. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I'd like to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it wasn't pass. It wasn't. It wasn't a vote yeah. to read for passage. Just a <laughs> vote to listen to hear. Okay. All right. All right. Um, at this point, then, it, we need to give it a resolution number, even though we're not passing it, so that it'll be part of the permanent record. Okay. I believe. Isn't that correct? They, even the non-passed resolutions go into the resolution book. Yes, and I didn't bring the resolution book because when on, no on the agenda. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll have to add the resolution number then. Oh, okay. Seven eight zero. Seven eight zero. Yes. All right. All right. Um, resolution 780. Resolution suspending ordinance number 2275 for a period of six months for, from passage of the resolution. Wherefore, as it has come to the City Council of Eureka, City of Eureka Springs' attention that there is a lack of available members to set on the City Planning Commission at this time, and whereas the City Council wishes to facilitate City business without undue delay, therefore it be resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that one, enforcement of Ordinance 2275 is hereby suspended for six months from the passage of this resolution or until such time as the Planning Commission shall have six members who are not members of this current City Council, whichever shall occur first. And then I wrote an emergency clause, although I don't think this is a resolution that needs one, but if we do, uh, if you want to pass it, it would be Section 2, that due to the lack of a sufficient number of members on the Planning Commission for the health welfare and safety of the city's citizens of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. An emergency is hereby declared to exist and this resolution shall be effective upon passage and signed by the mayor. Mr. Thomas. I have not moved to pass the resolution that was just read by Mr. Weaver. I'll second. And discussion? We need a vote. Well, is it going to include the emergency clause? I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I just wrote one because in case someone wanted to make an issue of its effective date. That will make a difference on how the vote is taken. Ms. Harmon, you had a question? I do. Um, I, just, I just need to clarify um, specifically, you, you said you talked to planning already and they determined that they would be able to meet once a month and they would be able to do a workshop once a month. And to hold any special meetings as okay. needed. And hold any special meetings. Um, and how many meetings have we missed because we didn't have a quorum? Your, your point? My point is the discussion is not on the, the motion that's on the table. Well, I'm trying to determine how I'll vote. Uh, I think I'll allow it. Go ahead if you finish up. That's all. I just wanted to know. I just wanted a clarification okay. on the original his discussion as to how many meetings. Uh, that I don't we know. Hadn't. Okay. Uh, I think we'll have to have a separate motion that uh, on the emergency clause if we need it. So, uh, all those in favor of the resolution as read, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. 4-1. All right. Do we get a motion, Mr. Thomas? I move to invoke the emergency call on the resolution. I'll second. Discussion? Mr. Meyer? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. 
Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yeah. Yes. Ms. Harmon? No. 4-1. Mr. Weaver, you want to read the emergency clause? Section 2, emergency clause. That due to the lack of a sufficient number of members on the City Planning Commission for the health, safety, health, welfare, and safety of the citizens of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, an emergency is hereby declared to exist. And this resolution shall become effective upon passage and signing by the mayor. Passed and resolved this blank day of 2019. All right. Uh, that brings us up to our next item is uh, ordinance for aggregate and sidewalks. Your motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all right, Mr. McClung. Yes, I'm here. You started this ordinance, this discussion. I don't, I don't know where we are from last time. I'm, I'm not sure either. I've been, uh, I've been. Do we have an ordinance? Out of touch. We do not have an ordinance. Okay. Uh, seeing as that, we do not have an ordinance. Uh, get a motion to defer this. I'll make a motion. I'll go ahead, Harry. Okay. Take defer. All right. Got a motion to defer this till we get to get an ordinance from Mr. Weaver. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, all right. Ordinance regarding animal changes, law changes. Motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. Get a second. I'm not hearing a second. No, it's just for discussion. Whether or not we're, I think there's a. Uh, okay, Miss Green. Um, I I know there's not an ordinance, and there were two parts to the ordinance. There was um, one on animals not being allowed um, to be kept at unoccupied properties, and to keep the 100 square foot um, container. But the ordinance on the livestock, I feel, should be two different ordinances because I think it's really addressing two different things. And I guess what I'm asking is if Mr. Weaver, when he writes them up, can write two separate things, or does the rest of the council feel that it needs to be together? I think there's a question here, Ms. Harmon. The original, in the minutes as they're written, they were included, unless I'm reading it completely wrong, it was, um, it was all included in one, and that's how the vote was done, and the vote failed. So, at this time... Vote passed. No, it passed. The vote passed? Yes. I have that motion failed. Nope. What are you looking at? So, if that's what we were originally talking about. And again, this is me coming into it after a prior... This is prior to this. So there was another ordinance passed afterwards, after the meeting itself? There was another vote, and it's in your packet. On June 10th. On, on June 10th. Of this year. Does that not say October... Does that not say the 10th month of 18? Oh, I'm sorry, this you're right. This says 610. This yeah. says at the August 27th council meeting. In the top right corner is its placement on the agenda. 610-19. That's today. 610-19. Okay. On all sets of minutes in the bottom right-hand corner, there's the date of the meeting and the page. It's 10 8 of 18. Okay. I wish I would have... Had that information. We I can talk about that well, after the meeting. Well, all right. Uh, if I could 
Okay, I think you have a copy of that. Oh, do you want that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, where are we? What What I was asking is, there there were I forget how many things on the ordinance that Tim was going to write, but I feel that the first two have a totally different merit than the second one, which is about livestock. And I would was asking if Mr. Weaver could separate them and make two different ordinances. Mr. Weaver? Each ordinance should bear upon uh, a separate concept. So if the council believes there to be two concepts, two, two ideas that are being addressed, there should be two ordinances, yes. Okay. Um, my reasoning for that is one is about like dogs and cats and one is about livestock, which really aren't pets or well it's gonna be we're gonna be discussing if they if they're allowed to be pets in our city. But I, I feel like it's two separate things and I feel like I feel that it has each of them has its own merit, but I think put together could cause it either to pass or fail and I would prefer that they be separated. Can you be specific on what the ordinance is that you're well, referring to? One is the pot okay. pids, that is a sunset clause. Right, right. And what is the second ordinance and that the, you're referring the first, to? The first two things on what we had recommended was one, no animals at... Um, <coughs> abandoned houses. Abandoned houses or properties. And the other one was to keep the 100-foot square enclosure. And we voted yes on those because we, we separated them. At, at, if I remember right, we kind of separated them. I thought we still had the 100-foot enclosure. Well, we do actually have that. We really So don't. we're not changing that? No, no. What I wanted really was to just add to our existing codes another number or whatever it would be to add that no animals be allowed at abandoned or unoccupied properties. Okay. And then the livestock one to be a totally separate entity. Mr. Weaver, follow that? I didn't. Um, when you say the livestock one, That's, what are you that's wanting the pot pigs. The, the, the pot belly pigs. Pot -belly pigs. Okay. Yes. Because then I do. American yes. guinea pigs. I, I've had a number of people that like part of the what we were proposing, and a number of people that don't like part of it. So I think it it would it's kind of apples and oranges to me. All right. Any hey, further, Mr. Thomas? What? <laughs> Could I ask a question first? Sure. Or we might pass that they would have a sunset clause or they could be legal here. The or, what is, but what is the ordinance that you have to be written down? So that has sunset clause as well. Mi Mickey was ra basically writing that one. The other one I was kind of writing. This well, in light of what just happened with the uh, planning commission, uh, the city clerk helped me to find an ordinance stated June of 1952, Ooh. which outlaws all <coughs> swine, horses, sheep, and goats within the city limits. So I would guess we would be have we would be amending that ordinance. Mm -hmm. And they're already outlawed here. They've been outlawed since 1952. So. As I remember the discussion, and, and I certainly stand to be corrected by the record, but there was some discussion that even though swine, pigs, uh, all those type of animals are considered livestock <coughs> by the Agricultural Commission, um, have been outlawed, that they do exist within the city limits, and that in order, I think Mickey's perspective was that in order to get them out of the town on a permanent basis that there needed to be some type of authorization for the ones that are here at this time 
to and give them a sunset so that they could either expire or be legally removed to another location at the end of the sunset period so that people didn't have to abandon animals that they thought were legal even though under our ordinance they are not legal at this time. So are we, are we amending the 1952 order? You would have to amend that with an amendment or a resolution. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you waving at me? <laughs> Further discussion? Wait. Okay, Ms. I Green. Just, I just, Tim, did you understand what, about separating them? I just, instead of having one ordinance or... I think they probably should be separate, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, any further discussion? No. All right, hearing none, we'll proceed on to our next item. Uh, discussion of speed limits uh, on Echoes and East Mountain. Mr. Myers, <coughs> Ms. Harmon. Mr. Meyer, you want to take off with this? Yes, yes. Take uh, off and running? Uh, I do believe that we need to reduce the speed limit on East Mountain to 20 miles an hour and Echoes to 15. East Mountain is uh, busy and narrow and uh, there's no sidewalk or place to get off the road and it's even worse down on Echoes. And with the amount of traffic with all the people that are cutting through there, um, It'll be easier for the police department to enforce the speed limit if the speed limit's cut down a little bit. Well, that's something we can take care of <coughs> administratively. I think, Mr., we have the chief here. Do you have a, a see a, any pros or cons here while you're here? On the reducing it? Oh, I'm sorry. On uh, what I fear in reducing it, is it's going to, as, as silly as it may sound, it's going to be more speeders. They're still going to be going the same speed as what they're, what they're used to now. I know um, in uh, 2016 under Chief Acord, we spent hours and hours and hours running radar down there. Uh, I know I personally was down there running radar along with other officers. And uh, th uh, through all of that, uh, for the hours that all the guys down there, as far as what the, the actual people violating the speed, there was actually very few. Now, were they going over 25? Yeah, there was a few of them. The majority were never going over like 28, 29. Okay. That's too fast. Right. I, I, I say it's over the speed limit, yes, but I'm talking like actually just flat out speeding. Okay. Um, the majority of us where we would sit and run radar was in between the two speed bumps, uh, primarily because some of the other areas down East Mountain, down Eccles, uh, so on and so forth down there, there was really nowhere else for us to sit either, okay, because uh, our radars were mounted front and rear mounted, so we kind of have to be sitting alongside the road front and rear. So in between those speed bumps was actually the best places where we would sit. And, uh, but for the majority of it, for the people and I know I would sit there and be visiting with people on the side of the road to Lando and they were talking about that person speeding they actually saw my radar how fast they was actually going and they, they couldn't believe it they actually thought they was going a lot faster than what they really were um, and I know uh, when I spoke to the mayor about this um, I did have some advice down there uh, as far as especially down around the corner down there towards uh, the gas tanks and so on and so forth uh, talk, uh, you know, it might be a good idea in the future or something, maybe start looking at maybe some washboards for, for notifications on that speed because I know in inclement weather I've had several accidents, people sliding off that. Uh, a lot of those accidents <laughs> had to deal with and that I personally worked had to deal with uh, uh, just faulty equipment like bald tires and so on and so forth. Um, so notifications uh, down there uh, lower in that speed and I, uh, but already, as you go further down Eccles, the speed already drops down there to 15, does it not? On council. On council, yes. Okay. On council. Because it drops to 15 down there already. And no one, mm -hmm. 
No one drives the speed limit on. <laughs> I mean, even on Steel Street, which is even worse, they go flying up that hill. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's the zigzag shortcut. Mm -hmm. The same car that's speeding on Steel Street is speeding on East Mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you have a specific vehicle that's speeding up through there? Or? No, I mean, you just said the same car. That's why I was... <laughs> Yeah, the guy that throws the whiskey bottle out there where the gas is. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I got you. I got you. <laughs> no, we're not in California. No, <laughs> no. Um, you can you can file a complaint and you can write an affidavit and do all this stuff though. Um, but uh, we can. Or do I personally think that lowering the speed is going or the posted speed limit is going to fix it? No, I do not. Is there some more things that we may be able to do, uh, just me as a department, to uh, or more presence in the area to try to get them slowed down? Sure, and I can do that easily. May I make a suggestion? Sure, sure. Put an ad, put a notice in the paper that there will be no, no tolerance on speed limit on these streets for the this week, mm -hmm. and name the dates, mm -hmm. and then have some presence. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. Or even just probably just kicking down there. I mean, that's our jobs. Mm -hmm. I don't have any problems sending officers down there. We've sent them down there many, many times before. I know uh, um, even when you came and talked to me at the police department that one day, I believe I had an officer down there that day too. <laughs> Over the years, I, I know like there was problems on Benton Street, and mm -hmm. I know a police presence down there at one time and tickets given out. Mm -hmm. It actually worked, you know. Mm -hmm. People really... Mm -hmm. So I guess, mm -hmm. you Until know. it backs off and it picks back up again. Well, it, it works for sure. a while and then you kind of have to go back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this turnarounds or these speed arounds that they're, whatever they're talking about, this, this gentleman, what are they called? Um, he wanted, not the speed bumps, the... Speed ramps. Tables. Oh, speed, speed tables. tables. Do well, they work? Do speed tables work? Yeah. And blow the suspension out of your car if you're not careful. Oh, okay. <laughs> like they work real good. <laughs> They're quieter than the speed bumps, right. and, uh -huh. and they do slow people. Yeah, because I will. tell you, those are those speed bumps. You have to just crawl over because they. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll definitely get your attention. Okay. If are you, they if you're driven down East Mountain? Those are speed bumps on there. Yeah. Like if you don't go down Greenwood Hollow towards the school, those are speed tables. Okay, I will take and. See there. Are they more expensive? Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're more permanent, too. Mm -hmm. Oh. All right. Any further discussion? No. All right. Um, all right. Discussion on uh, adding Corley to the street system. Motion to discuss? So moved. Second. All right. Mr. Meyer, once again. Okay. Well, I think they've come and made their case. Uh, it's all a matter of whether um, the compaction is good enough or if it's payment that the city wants. Uh, they just talked, said that they uh, weren't finished with the with the improvement of the of the circle, I do believe they've got the survey done. I have not seen a copy of the survey, so I'm, I'm guessing. But as far as the easement is concerned and everything, I believe they've got that part done. Uh, maybe Dwayne can address what, what it is that uh, they need to do to proceed. Yes, and, and you know, uh, probably with the construction, I don't know if there's that many more houses going on. You know, they probably <coughs> don't completely finish out the surface with the possibility of damage and everything. But, but the compaction to start with, you know, the city, you know, as we've said in Lawrence, you don't want to you don't want to take anything in that's that becomes a, a you know maintenance. Uh, drag or uh, uh, more of a burden to the system but uh, you know basically you first you know, on, a, on a street you've got to have some sub compaction uh, so you, you've got to look at uh, before you could put a street on it so you're looking at basically two foot of 
you couldn't freeze below that, and, and you know, you, so uh, the street's not anywhere close to where we would even consider taking it in. Some of the others that that's you know that's the city street that we already own, and they and they developed that. That's of course a different type of event. This was vacated. It's private property. <coughs> and, and it was something, and the utilities and the, and the drainage, everything's been done. You know, perfectly, and, and we've taken in. They've done a great job on that, but but the street itself is still loose gravel, and and, and it's, it's 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 not really up to discussion at this point even of, of consider taking it in. What would need to be done? To well, you know, you know, the material is going to have to be pulled out of there until you get to you know something solid down. You're looking two foot. It determines if. If you go down, and I think you can get something solid there. If not, you're going to have to bring in some, you know, red dirt or something you can compact. Uh, you're looking at, uh, you know, 95% proctor density, you know, something tested. We know we're solid. And then on the top, you know, some of the, the, the code for the subdivision talks about chip and seal and different things that we're not, we're trying to avoid that anyway. I mean, but. You know, we've talked about the drainage, and, 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 and if the road's kept up, it doesn't have to be paved or it doesn't have to be concreted. But, but a road, someone at some point has to be responsible for that road. And if it's, if it's abandoned, then of course everybody thinks the city, and it looks bad for the city. So it, it's a problem, but not only for this road, but anything in the future. <coughs> I'm sorry. I just have a question. Ms. Harm. When the subdivision or this particular property was approved to be done, so <coughs> what you're saying is they were to meet the specifications of the city? In, in does well, does if, if the city was to accept it, yes. And that was, that was obviously stated at the beginning. If, if, if the city is going to take it in, it's going to have to meet our specs. Okay. But... At, I guess what I'm asking is, if, if that was the agreement when it was started, that they followed specifications that the city has for a road and for a subdivision, um, who, who approves whether or not that's been done? Well, that's uh, well. I look at it. It is. I approve it, but it's you know planning and zoning, and, and of course that was earlier discussion of planning and zoning and the the members, and uh, it's got to go through planning and zoning. But right. But, but when? But who approves that it's actually been completed? Uh, that you know, it, it obviously would have to to come through me, or I think it states that the the planning and zoning could could designate an engineer of their choice to, to decide that. To uh, decide whether or not it's been completed the way it was agreed it's, upon? Yeah. It's okay. looking at it. But, but uh, like I said, you know, some of the code is, is you know, it, it covers part, but it's not completely sufficient. We have a, uh, some uh, rigs that we use for, that, that I have developed for, for streets that we're looking at, you know. So it's got to meet those. Uh, Greg, so, and, and sometimes, you know, that's, planning and zoning may not ask me, but that's, you know, we work with the developers. I, I think they do have a point with the stormwater idea. Uh, we do have a bad stormwater problem here in town. And every, you know, we got, we're just running the water down every street until it gets to the bottom of the hill, and that just... And nobody wants it to run across their property. They want the little curb made to keep that water running down the hill. And, uh, yeah, you've seen a lot of the, the little berms we put in. <laughs> it's, that's not it. helping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'll save save a driveway and it brings it on down. You know, it bigs up the speed. But uh, and that's uh, some of the development that's happening. That, that people are getting ahead of that a little bit now. You know, storm waters is, is discussed as it comes in. So, uh, but. You know, you, you, you can't, the city is not in a position to, you know, take in things just because. I mean, you know, we, it's, you know, we've got in that discussion with <coughs> sewer lines and water lines. It, it just, you know, at some point you can't, you can't sustain a, a department 
with, with that kind of uh, stuff, uh, a drag on your on on your uh, equipment and, and, and resources. Just um, cost wise, would you, could you give an estimate as to what it would cost to go ahead and do that project? Well, I know you know will, you said some if, things aren't finished, so say if you were going to say if we were going to go in and, and pull that out right now and come back um, I'd say you know equipment labor we're looking you know twenty five thousand dollars maybe some twenty over twenty probably to pull that back and bring it in it, it, it depends on say if I pulled in and you had to bring in a bunch of dirt I think on the on that hill it wouldn't be to that extent but uh, but that's say there's a lot of clay material up there yeah, so I think you could you could maybe pull down what has been done and and but but that's that's you know you, you get it to that point and, and like I said maybe maybe it's not wise to completely finish it till till the construction you got all the cement trucks and everything going in like we done. discussed but 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 someone asked in the interim you know I think some of the neighbors talk about you know dust control you know you've got gravel and once it gets hot and dry you're going to have dust blowing off that so uh, that's a problem that's a lot of times you, you, you need to drop water on it so it's, uh, we got plenty of dirt roads in town <laughs> yeah yeah and that's thing we can't you know it's at the point we can't we, we're not equipped to pave those roads or we, we can and, uh, and as you know a dirt road is going to be more expensive more time consuming grading and, and, and maintaining so uh, <coughs> That's kind of where we are, and we've talked about it. If you know, if if the developer come in, a lot of places will look at it. You, you, they put a bond down, but you know, of course, we don't want to we don't want to discourage any kind of development we can get. So you don't want to make it, you know, where everybody, nobody can afford it. But you know, what happens to these? Say, if if somebody doesn't sign off that they're going to maintain that for eternity, you can wind back up with a Looks like a driveway from heck, and you got all these citizens living in there. And then, and then, what does the city do then, Mr. McClellan? Well, I, I mean, I understand not wanting to to finish the road out because of of the future construction. Hopefully, that it, you know it won't be that that long. And I don't know if if it's required. It once you've got a 50% build that it needs to be completed or or I'm not you know I don't know if there's anything that defines that even but but I would think that I mean the regulations are what they are and that's the way they need to be treated is you know and and followed um, and if you know if a performance bond is needed then that's what's needed I guess I don't you know, I just I, I just don't like the idea of settling for anything less because if we do, then everybody expects that. You know, it just it just it's just not a good thing to 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 shortchange what the law is. It's just not. I don't. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't. Now, if you want to change the law and make where they can do something different, that's then then change it. But. I mean, it is what it is, and I don't think what we have on the books is wrong at all. You know, the requirements are specific, and, and that's the way it should be. Yeah, and that's, you know, it's like you say, if you, if, uh, you accept things in that are, are and it has happened in the past, we, the city has accepted things are <coughs> taken in, you know, part of the city is, that never was sewer. Developers have came in. And, and we decide, okay, we'll take it in, but then, you know, you get behind the curve. So that's what we're trying to avoid if we can. Uh, try to, to make it sustainable is, you know, if if there's something to that extent, unless, like you said, unless it, it meets specifications, we don't even want to consider taking it in. But uh, there's not a lot of, you know, but there is some teeth in, in, the, in the code that, that does, come back and talk about fees and fines if necessary but we don't want to get into that can well, what you can do I suppose is withhold you know uh, certificates of occupation through the building building inspector or something like that for for someone I suppose 
You know, that that would be, but, you know, and, and nobody sure as heck wants to even consider even things like that. It's like you say, we don't want to stop anybody, but at the same time, the city doesn't need to be left holding the bag. No, no, that's, a, like I said, it's a, the trying to, to make our funds cover what we need to maintain and seal. We're, you know, we're making some headway, but we're still way behind trying to, to, to catch up. So, uh, you know, that's 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 kind of what we look at. And, and we've done that with some other developers that are, they're, they've agreed to maintain that. Uh, you know, say Doc Bell, you know, he's going to, you know, he's signed off. He says he's taking care of that street, that road. It's mm -hmm. not really a, a city street. It's going to be a private. development private drive. So that's no problem, but it, but we just don't want to get in when it's abandoned and, and people are hung with it. Well, let me ask you this. Well, of course, it's it's after the fact now because, I mean, it's a, it's a PUD and, and it's submitted and it gets, excuse me, gets approved based on the guidelines. Uh, but if they want to do keep it as a private street, what what can they be made to do? Well, that's that's and it should be, you know. Or what constitutes? Better let me ask this: What constitutes a private street? Well, it's more of a like I said, it's is to be more of a drive or a, you know, looking at a, them maintaining a, a subdivision which allows that. But it, it allows just a. a uh, you know, base top, you know, just a base rock, but it, but it, but even at that point, it, it still talks about compaction and, and you know, keeping the road passable, uh, and then, and that way, that keeps the dust down if you've got enough base on top and it's just not gravel, uh, but, but yeah, it's it's covered, but, but but the subdivision code is a little sketchy on that, yeah, so it's it's it says. It's up to the developer to take it in and, and do it, but it, it allows them to, to put a basically a street in, like you said. It's not a city street. Well, I, I know when 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 McClung really was involved with Eureka South Subdivision, before we could sell any lots out there, the streets had to be put in. They had to be paved, and and that's what was done. And yeah, you know, at the developer's expense, I know that. Yeah, yeah. and that's uh, and that's the way the, the city looks at it, and it's it's in code that it, it, it's it's supposedly up to the developer. Uh, and, and you know, there's different options that they can do. It doesn't necessarily have to be asphalt, but if it is asphalt, it has to meet the requirements. And and like I said, and then stormwater has to be included in that. So, uh, but that's you know. Uh, if it if something's up and, and the city can justify it and take it in and help out, I mean that's that's the best way to do it if we can. Uh, Mr. Thomas, you had a question. No, I didn't have a question, and I may hate myself for saying this, but I believe this is an administrative decision. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, any other comments from anyone? All right. Hearing none. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, that ends, concludes our uh, normal business. Uh, we got agenda setting. Uh, for the uh, appointing a council person to planning. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? No. Anyone? Yes, sir. Speed tables on Eastmont. Uh, I would suggest that we bring that up at our budget meeting for mid-year budget. Okay. That'd be fine. Okay. Oh, need a second for Mr. Thompson. I'll second that. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else? All right. Council comments, Mr. Thomas. Yes. There, <coughs> within the last week, two weeks, there have been two more violations of the open meetings law with group emails. I know that we've discussed it at length at a, a meeting. Uh, the city clerk has sent out emails asking people to stop. The mayor has sent out emails asking people to stop. Part of the law reads that the violation of the open meetings <coughs> law is considered a class C dis misdemeanor. I feel like when you send me a group email and I read it, I'm participating in this misdemeanor. 
if you came over to my house and asked me to go help you steal a chicken, I would probably say no. Stop sending me group emails. They're against the law, and I don't want to be a part of them. Thank you. Ms. Green? Um, nothing. Ms. Harmon? Nothing. Ms. Meyer? Well, can't wait for the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McClung? Uh, I was... I was taking messages through the ball game and or through the, through the meeting and, and the race and the Razorbacks uh, uh, slaughtered uh, Ole Miss today, 14 to one. So they go on to the College World Series. So uh, very proud of them. That's really all I have. All right, uh, we have uh, several items coming up. Uh, and one, I, I wish uh, Mickey Snyder the best in recovery. She's uh, very ill at this point, and, and uh, wish her, or give her our best wishes and thoughts and prayers. Uh, coming up <clears throat> June 14th, we have uh, Alt at the Odd from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., featuring White Manson and Barbarians of Tomorrow. And on the following day, the 15th, we have Music in the Park featuring Opa. And uh, from 5 to 7 in the Basin Park. Uh, on the 20th, and Oklahoma's home school band from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's probably, we've never had them there before, but I bet that's going to be a good deal. So, again, from 10 to 5 in the Basin Park on the 20th. <coughs> on the 21st, La Prairie and the Ozarks, season's open. La Bohome, uh, probably mispronouncing that, but 7 p.m. at Inspiration Point. And on the 22nd, we have Jim Holt Celebration of Life Parade at 7 p.m. Gathering at uh, Basin Park up Spring Street and concluding at Brews. And then on the 23rd to the 27th, we'll be seeing a lot of crossfires across the America Car Show all day and evening at the end of the Ozarks. Uh, motion to dis So move. Adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? Stay here. Okay. Thank you all.